writing a good life is just like writing a good book. I'm in the first, I'd say about 40 to 50% of writing my first novel. I've already written a nonfiction book, but this is a novel and that's an entirely different thing because it's all fiction. So what happens is I put these characters together and they do all these really random crazy things that I had no idea would happen. So every time I show up to the blank page, something new and different and unexpected happens. That's exactly what it's like in real life too. You show up at work or in your family or at school or wherever you go and all these random things happen that you didn't expect. Sometimes you lose people that you love. Other times new people come in that change your life for better or for worse forever. Sometimes you lose a pet. Sometimes you gain a whole bunch of money. Sometimes you get a job. Sometimes you lose your job. Sometimes you get sick. Other times, somebody that you love gets sick. I came up with these five ways that you can write a good life, which are kind of the same thing as writing a good book. Number one, when you are writing, whether it's a good book or a good movie or a good life, pretend that you're the author of a riveting, captivating, most interesting book or life or movie ever. And know that in order to be riveting, interesting, and captivating for both you and for the people around you, there has to be ups and there has to be downs and there has to be plateaus. Right now in your life, you may be in an up, a down, or a plateau, but this is the way it's supposed to be. That's the way life is. That's the way even books are, and movies are. The best books and movies and lives have ups, downs, and plateaus. Number two, Make plans and hold them loosely. So whether you're writing a book or a life, have a plan for your career, education, finances, relationship, children. Hold them very lightly and loosely because if you grip them and you're say that has to happen this way and if it doesn't happen this way I'm gonna die and my whole life depends on this relationship or this money or this job or this health crisis ending the way you think it should, then you're just going to be living uptight and fearful the whole time. Living that way is no fun for you or the people around you. Number three, expect things to change. Know that no matter what you plan or how you want things to work out, it's not going to work out the way you want. So like with my characters, I put them in these this camper van, for instance, and it ends up getting towed to the next destination, for instance, instead of getting driven in happily for instance. It happens like that in real life too, doesn't it? You plan this to happen or that to happen. It doesn't happen, but if you expect it or want it or hold on to it to go a certain way, then you're going to be disappointed and you're going to be angry and bitter. But if you go into it knowing that number one, it's a loose plan and number two, it's going to change. People are going to die. People are going to leave. People are going to come into your life. Things are going to happen. So just expect that. Be open to the unexpected. Number four, whether you believe in God and have faith or whether you just trust the universe or believe in some sort of a divine overarching plan for your life, know that that thing that you trust in has your best interests at heart. Everything that is happening, even if it feels terrible and it hurts, is happening for a reason. And maybe you'll never ever know that reason. And maybe the reason doesn't even make sense even once you do find it out. If you can really believe that and trust that whether it's God or the divine being or the universe wants the best for you and is sort of aligning things in your favor, then you will be happier and more joyful and more peaceful. I can't prove that everything in my life has happened for my own good, but I have this belief and this belief makes me happy. So if it makes me happy and fills me with peace, I'd be a fool to give it up. Number five, take the next step with curiosity, faith, wonder, and awe, even if you don't know what's going to happen, especially if you don't know what's going to happen. Because if you think you know what's going to happen, and if you think you have control over what's going to happen, then you're not going to be curious. 
You don't have to be faithful. You don't have to trust in God or the divinity or the universe because you know what's going to happen. So those are five tips on how to write a good life. Those are five things that I'm actually applying not only to my own life but to the book I'm writing. Take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. And mwah! So I'm working on what's called a tagline for my book. It's called Almost Sage. And so I'll try these out. I haven't even told anyone what the book is about yet, but these are some practice taglines. So the first one, which I think I'm gonna ditch, is this. A biographer's new life is threatened by ghosts from the only past she can't hide, her own. Dun, dun, dun. The problem is that it's not really literally ghosts, so it kind of is misleading. And that's making a promise that I can't keep. So the one that I think that I'm going to go with for now is a biographer tired of running from her own past is selling her business and starting fresh. Her plans are ruined when she meets her hot-tempered Israeli half-sister. Problem with that, it's too long. So I need something that's like about 10 to 15 words. So that's what happens when you write a book. You should come up with some sort of a tagline that's really short and sweet and to the point so that when you're walking your dog and the neighbor says, well, what's your book about? You can say, let me get my computer and go check.